Every family needs a father figure to care for and protect them. But what could be said of a man who makes life unbearable for his own daughter and murders his wife with poison? Joshua Lee Hunsucker, a former US paramedic from the state of North Carolina, was arrested and charged with first degree murder on December 20th, 2019, following the death of his wife, Stacy. The 32-year-old woman was found dead at the couple's home in Mount Holly on September 23, 2018, and although her death was initially ruled as a heart attack, subsequent findings proved otherwise. Meanwhile, Mr. Joshua wasted no time in collecting more than $200,000 worth of life insurance after his wife's death, cremating her body and refusing an autopsy to be carried out. Four years later, Joshua would be rearrested on Tuesday, August 6, 2024, and jailed in Gaston County, this time around for the poisoning of his 10-year-old daughter and the harassment of his former in-laws. This is the twisted case of Joshua Hunsucker, the paramedic officer who would harm his family for financial gains. Unfortunately, we don't know much about Joshua's background except the fact that he hails from Mount Holly, a city in Gaston County, North Carolina. We also know that he graduated from East Gaston High School and worked as a lead paramedic with Atrium Health Med Center Air, located in Charlotte, North Carolina, from 2013 until his arrest. While in East Gaston High School, he met and fell in love with Stacy Robinson, and soon they got married on May 1st, 2010 in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The marriage was blessed with two girls named Piper and Willow. Stacy also graduated from East Gaston High School and got her associate's degree in paralegal sciences from Gaston College. She was a lifetime member of Mount Holly First United Methodist Church, where she participated in many groups and activities. Her resume indicates that she worked for different institutions, including the First Methodist Preschool in Mount Holly as a teacher. In addition to that, Stacy served as a paralegal at different firms, including Ted Grieve and Associates, and also for Reagan and Reagan. She loved crafting, going to the beach, watching sports, and taking pictures of her daughters and herself. But eight years later, things began to turn south in her marriage, eventually leading to her death. On September 23, 2018, Stacy was found dead in her home in Mount Holly, North Carolina. The cause of her death was initially thought to be cardiac arrest since she was already suffering from a heart problem that made her depend on a pacemaker to breathe properly. Her husband, Joshua Hunsucker, made sure her body was immediately cremated and denied an autopsy to be carried out to ascertain the true cause of her sudden demise. One year later, on December 19, 2019, Joshua was arrested by the authorities following a rather shocking tip-off by Stacy's mother, Suzanne Robinson, which made him the prime suspect in the investigation. Mrs. Suzanne had reached out to the North Carolina Department of Insurance with a shocking accusation against her late daughter's husband. She suspected that there was something fishy about Stacy's death after Joshua Hunsucker gave different versions of where he was before he discovered his wife had slumped over and was not breathing at their home on September 23, 2018. At the time, he told investigators he was seated at the kitchen table with his back to her, working on his computer, when he turned around to see Stacy slumped over on the couch. However, Mrs. Suzanne thought that Joshua was probably inspired by another homicide in Gaston County two weeks before Stacy's death, in which a nurse used eye drops to poison her husband. The woman by name Lana Sue Clayton from South Carolina was on August 31, 2018, accused of fatally poisoning her husband after toxicology reports found high levels of tetrahydrazoline in his body. Mrs. Clayton was sentenced to 25 years in prison two years later after she pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, and according to investigators, said she only wanted her husband to suffer by putting Vicine in his drink. Motivated by this, Joshua also poisoned Stacy Hunsucker less than a month after Lana Clayton's case. Mrs. Suzanne Robinson claimed Joshua had killed Stacy in order to collect a $250,000 insurance benefit. Following these strong allegations, the North Carolina Office of Insurance began investigating Joshua Hunsucker. They found out that he had received $250,000 from two life insurance policies, one for $50,000 and another for $200,000 after Stacy's demise. Barry Smith, then Assistant Director of Public Affairs at the agency, would later confirm this. Mrs. Suzanne also expressed her suspicion of the circumstances surrounding her daughter's death due to the fact that Joshua Hunsucker would not allow Stacy's body to undergo an autopsy prior to her cremation. 
Subsequent discoveries showed it was only the beginning of a bizarre saga as laid out by prosecutors. Though Stacy Robinson's organs were not preserved for donation, a blood sample was taken before her cremation and preserved because of her status as an organ donor. Investigators obtained the sample and sent it to a lab, which reported that it contained 30 to 40 times the therapeutic level of tetrahydrosoline. When ingested, tetrahydrosoline can cause sleepiness, low blood pressure, a dangerously slow heart rate, heart rhythm abnormalities, and difficulty breathing. Jordan Green, an attorney for the North Carolina Department of Insurance, confirmed the reports to the court. I don't know that he would characterize it as a confession, but it certainly approached that level, said Jordan Green. Going further, prosecutors also allege that Joshua Hunsucker poisoned his wife over a period of time by putting these eye drops in her beverages. Moreover, Joshua had also allegedly told two co-workers before Stacy's death that if he ever wanted to kill someone, he'd poison them with Visine or another brand of eye drops. On the other hand, Joshua's attorney, David Teddy, declined to comment on the case and stressed that it would be strenuously opposed, going further to mention that his client was a lead paramedic with Atrium Health and had no criminal record. However, unknown to them, Joshua Hunsucker was sacked the following day by the company. Meanwhile, the Robinsons addressed their late daughter in a statement shared with a journalist shortly after Hunsucker's arrest. Stacy, your mother and father promise you that we will not rest until justice is served. We will do everything in our power to support and care for your beautiful daughters. We will love them as we loved you and we still love you. We will never let your children forget what a truly amazing mother you were to them. Your spirit and your smile live on through them every day. After the hearing, Hunsucker was held at the Gaston County Jail on a $1.5 million bond. The Gaston County Police Department and Homeland Security Investigations assisted in the investigation. A day before his release on bail, the parents of Stacy Robinson filed a wrongful death case against Joshua Hunsucker. This was the 23rd of December 2019. Suzanne and John Robinson alleged that Joshua had killed Stacy in order to collect on her $250,000 life insurance policy. Also, Stacy's mother, Suzanne, alleged that Joshua was having an extramarital affair with a woman whose identity is yet to be disclosed. Meanwhile, investigators interrogated Joshua's co-workers at Atrium Health's Med Center Air, where he had served as a lead paramedic since 2013, and they expressed their surprise at how unaffected he seemed by his wife's death. Joshua's co-workers also told investigators that they were shocked by how fast he had another girlfriend less than six months after his wife's death. Following these allegations, former Gaston County Superior Court Judge Jesse B. Caldwell Jr. granted a temporary restraining order, ordering that Joshua Lee Hunsucker not use the $250,000 he received from two life insurance policies to post his $1.5 million bail related to his first-degree murder of Stacy. But Hunsucker, who was 35 by then, wouldn't stay long in detention. He was released from the Gaston County Jail at 5.29 p.m. on December 24, 2019, after posting the $1.5 million bail that had been set five days earlier by District Court Judge James Jackson. Jail records show the bail was posted by the U.S. Bonding Company. A few weeks later, on January 6, 2020, Joshua Hunsucker was ordered to give an account of his financial assets after being indicted on two additional felony charges of insurance fraud and obtaining property over $100,000 by false pretense. The attorney for Stacy Hunsucker's family said if they win in court, all of the money would go to their grandchildren, who were both five and six years old. But this could only be possible after they had determined how much money was left. Stacy's family was afraid that Joshua Hunsucker had spent all the insurance money on lavish trips with his new girlfriend and an expensive boat. They told resident Superior Court Judge Jesse Caldwell that Hunsucker, who got out on bond the day before Christmas, moved some of the items he may have purchased with the insurance money. One of the items was a boat worth $80,000 to $100,000. Caldwell told Hunsucker's attorney to deliver a warning in the strongest possible terms not to try hiding the items or he would go back to jail. You may clear to him everything I said, Caldwell said. The suit claims the two went on multiple expensive vacations following Stacy Hunsucker's death. Hunsucker's attorney told the judge the boat was moved so it wouldn't be stolen. He is no longer going to be living there, defense attorney David Teddy said. He did take some personal items so he can take up residence in another location. Hunsucker was given a month and a half to produce a list of items believed to be purchased with the life insurance money and reveal how much was left. After that, the court will hear claims for the wrongful death suit. After his wife's death, Hunsucker would then, according to the lawsuit, 
hide the poisoning by arranging for a friend and an outside medical examiner to issue Stacy Hunsucker's death certificate. Stacy's family alleged that he prevented them from obtaining an autopsy and had his wife's body cremated. After that, he obtained the life insurance money and used it to buy a $100,000 Supra boat in January 2019, buy another piece of property, and pay off his house. This house, which had a 1,516 square foot, three bedroom, two bath feature, sat on a half acre of property located at 304 Eastwood Drive in the Catawba Heights neighborhood of Mount Holly. The 28-year-old home, which the couple acquired on February 25, 2013, had a market value of $215,380 at the time. Meanwhile, the wrongful death lawsuit also sought compensatory and punitive damages exceeding $25,000, as Stacy's family claimed her death was caused by the willful, intentional, and malicious conduct of Joshua Hunsucker. In addition to suing Hunsucker, Suzanne and John Robinson were fighting for custody of their two granddaughters. They filed a motion asking that the court reverse a decision that gave custody of Stacy's children, who were both eight and five years old at the time, to her husband's sister, Jessica Darlene Hunsucker. In their motion, John and Suzanne Robinson asked to claim full custody of the two girls. Prior to this, the two girls were in the custody of Jessica Darlene Hunsucker, who was granted a permanent custody order by District Court Judge Michael Lands on December 20th, 2019, the day that Hunsucker made his first court appearance. The order, which was agreed to by Joshua Hunsucker, allowed him to visit his two girls every other weekend from 5 p.m. Friday until 5 p.m. Sunday. He was also allowed visitation on Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. In addition to that, his court-mandated daily curfew was later extended so he could attend his daughter's lacrosse games and other school activities. A few months after the harassment charges and custody tussle, Joshua's attorney issued an affidavit informing the court that his client was broke and needed the support of the state to pay for his legal defense. This happened on the 22nd of September 2020. Joshua Lee Hunsucker, 36, is broke, with bills totaling $116,000, and unable to pay for an investigator and expert witnesses as he prepares his defense to a first-degree murder charge, said his attorney David Teddy. Since his arrest on December 19, 2019, Hunsucker has lost his job with Atrium Health's Med Center Air, where he had served as a lead paramedic since 2013. In addition to that, David Teddy stated that any other assets Joshua could use to pay for his defense were currently tied up in a wrongful death lawsuit filed by the parents of his former wife, Stacy Robinson Hunsucker. All of his assets, his house, his vehicles, have been tied up in the wrongful death action. He cannot spend it or liquidate it to assist in his defense. Furthermore, the affidavit listed Joshua Huntucker's monthly expenses totaling about $2,700. It showed a monthly income of $0, with $3,785 in his credit union account, as well as Joshua's ownership of three vehicles. Debts were also indicated at $17,500 and $90,000 in personal property, with $79,000 owed on that. Though his home, valued at $200,000, was paid for, he received an income tax refund of $8,637 in 2019. The incurred debts made Superior Court Judge David Phillips approve Teddy's motion to declare his client indigent, although Teddy clarified that his attorney fees would not be paid for by the state. Given the defendant's current circumstances, his prospects for gainful employment remain dim. Without the ability to hire expert witnesses as well as an investigator, the defendant will be deprived of a fair trial. Meanwhile, prior to his arrest in December 2019, Joshua Hunsucker was on board an atrium helicopter that had caught fire in mid-flight on November 26, 2019. The syringe pump of the copter suddenly went up in flames, which forced the pilot to make an emergency landing at the parking lot of a car dealer's shop. Fortunately, no one was injured. Immediately after the incident, Atrium Health began to investigate what led to the fire outbreak. The hospital system said it was thankful there had been no patients on board the helicopter at the time. Two years later, on March 29, 2021, Joshua Hunsucker was arrested in Mecklenburg County and charged with setting the fire that consumed Atrium's helicopter in 2019. However, on March 30, 2021, he was once again released on a $50,000 bond although he was still awaiting trial for the murder of his wife. On December 6, 2021, Joshua Hunsucker's attorney, David Teddy, filed a motion asking for a change in venue in his client's case. David Teddy cited the extensive national media coverage of the case and negative social media comments against his client. 
I would contend that picking a jury in this county, with this amount of negative publicity directed toward the defendant, people have strong opinions about it. They're emotionally connected to the case. It would take forever to get a jury picked in this county. It's clear this community wants to punish him. However, Robinson's family prosecutor, Jordan Green, argued that Teddy didn't meet the burden required to change the venue of the case. The U.S. Supreme Court and the North Carolina Supreme Court have found over and over and over again that factually accurate media coverage of a case is no basis for change of venue, Jordan Green said. The defense hasn't presented any case law that would suggest that Facebook comments are a basis for a change of venue. But unfortunately for Joshua, the Honorable Carla Archie denied him this request. While still awaiting trial for his wife's murder, Joshua Hunsucker filed a police report dated February 4, 2023, asserting that he was kidnapped and assaulted along Mountain Island Highway in Mount Holly. The alleged assault happened around 7 p.m. However, prosecutors didn't believe his story and alleged that Hunsucker staged his own kidnapping. But in his complaint, he told authorities that John Robinson, his father-in-law, had attacked him while he was stopping to change a tire. Hunsucker claimed Mr. John had him pistol-whipped, zip-tied, and drugged that evening, although authorities said they found no evidence to support his claims. On Friday, March 10th, 2023, Joshua was once again arraigned in court. This time around, he requested that his wife's blood be retested. The court session, which lasted for just seven minutes, saw the judge give Hunsucker's defense team 60 days to find an independent lab to test a sample of Stacy Robinson Hunsucker's blood. Meanwhile, investigators have said shortly after his wife died from cardiac arrest, Hunsucker refused to have an autopsy performed on her, saying he did not want Stacy to be cut up despite indicating she was an organ donor. But previously released search warrants said an organ donation center still preserved some of Stacy's blood. According to testing, her blood had 30 to 40 times the normal level of tetrahydrosoline, the main chemical in eye drops like the scene, which can cause cardiac arrest if ingested. Following the results, Special Prosecutor Jordan Green said investigators brought Hunsucker in for an interview, which gave them cause to arrest Hunsucker. Also, defense attorney David Teddy said they had already called two labs that could not test for tetrahydrosoline, and it was unclear if there was enough blood left to be tested. All parties involved agreed on the 60-day timeline set by the judge, though Hunsucker did not address the court when given the opportunity. However, there was still no set trial date for Hunsucker's murder charge. But despite all the luck he previously had, being granted bail on each occasion of his arrest, Joshua Hunsucker didn't appreciate his luck or learn from the mistakes he made in the past. In fact, he would go ahead and do something worse. This time around, luck wasn't on his side. 20 days after his alleged staged kidnapping, Joshua's eldest daughter became gravely ill. She was taken to the hospital where treatment was administered. However, Joshua Hunsucker told medical professionals who were treating his daughter that it appeared she had been given vaccine, which was not a reasonable conclusion given her symptoms at the time. The girl was hospitalized in two different medical facilities and has since recovered. But a year later, on August 6, 2024, Joshua was arrested once again in connection with his daughter's poisoning and the harassment of his late wife's parents. Medical experts at the hospital had carried out a blood test on the little girl and found a disturbing trace of poison in it. Prosecutors said experts found symptoms including low blood pressure, a low heart rate, sleepiness and extreme exhaustion, constricted blood vessels, a transient alteration of awareness, and a brief loss of normal awareness or behavior. In addition to tetrahydrosoline, tests showed that she also had a drug prescribed as an adult antidepressant in her system. Attorneys allege that this was an attempt to pin his wife's murder on his former in-laws, Stacy's parents, to remove the Robinsons from the lives of his daughters. Prosecutors also noted several alleged incidents of harassment and intimidation, including Hunsucker routinely taking pictures or videos of Stacy's parents, driving by their home, sitting in the parking lot of the church the Robinsons attend, and making inappropriate gestures at them. According to prosecutors, many of these actions were done in front of his daughters. His behavior toward the Robinsons was noted to have become more and more aggressive, and their safety was a concern. Prosecutors filed a motion for Hunsucker's bond to be revoked. The state says it is concerned that Hunsucker's dangerous actions will continue to escalate. In a court hearing on Friday, August 9, 2024, 
Hunsucker's attorney requested that a public defender be appointed to represent Hunsucker on the new charges related to the alleged staged kidnapping and his daughter's poisoning. A motion by prosecutors to revoke his bond will be addressed in a court hearing scheduled for October 7, 2024. Until then, Hunsucker will remain in the Gaston County Jail. Meanwhile, the Robinsons' attorney stressed that keeping their daughter's children safe was their primary concern right now. From the Robinsons' perspective, safety is paramount for their family and their grandkids. They are thankful and appreciative of the district attorney and the continued effort to investigate and seek justice for Stacy. Following his arrest, Joshua is now facing eight more charges in Gaston County, four counts of intimidating a witness and four counts of obstruction of justice. This case is ongoing, with his next court date scheduled for December 26, 2024. That is where we draw the curtain on today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and would appreciate your comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more true life stories like this. Thanks for staying with us and goodbye.